to begin, um, what we're going to do is go through Photoshop demo here. Um, I want to go through um, all of the um, tools, um, communicate the shortcuts included. Some of you are already going to know this. Um, and then demo some of these different tools uh, in Photoshop. Um, so what we have here is um, this is the move tool. So really what I can do with this tool is what I'm doing here is actually unlocking the background. I'm double clicking this. Now it's asking me if I need to rename this layer. So once I double click the layer in the layers palette, which is going to be over here on the right side, um, I have the option of renaming this layer. So I'm going to call it farmhouse. And then I'm going to hit OK. So once I double click this farmhouse layer, prior to that it was a locked layer. So you can see that by this lock over here. I'm going to undo what I just did. And by double clicking it, it's going to be the farmhouse layer. Now I can move it around. So this is an unlocked layer. So the reason why you would do something like this is really to be able to cut and paste pieces of a layer onto different layers and move things around. That's what my move tool allows me to do is basically grab a piece of a layer and move it around on, on the canvas. How many of you are familiar with that? Just about everybody. Okay. So then I'll move foot faster. This is the marquee tool. Um, basically the marquee tool, I'm going to be able to um, take this shape here. And any of these shapes. So what I'm doing is clicking and holding and revealing the um, tools that are underneath this category. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, I have a single row marquee. Um, I have these, uh, this elliptical marquee. And very simply, it's just click, drag to create the shape. Hold shift down to constrain the shape, i.e. to make it a perfect circle, a perfect square. Um, again, using this move tool here to grab and move things out of the way. Um, so keyboard shortcuts, you know, move tool is the, is the button V. Um, marquee tool is M. So in the marquee tool, whatever tool I have selected here underneath this, um, uh, this drop down menu, um, I'm just going to, you know, select it. Um, and create the shape right. So anytime I want to go back to that, you know, circular shape, I'm just going to have to hit M. Um, so whatever, you know, if I'm down here at the single column marquee tool, you know, I'm doing something else, I can just hit M and it's going to go back to back to either the elliptical or the rectangular. You can see all the shortcuts here are going to be um, uh, shown to you uh, within the menu if you just hold hold the menu button. The biggest part for me um, that helped me learn uh, Photoshop is really understanding um, about selecting. Uh, so, so, you know, there's so many different ways to select something in Photoshop. It's just a matter of what is, you know, having an understanding of what's the best way to select something. And then you can go and do your photo editing or your color, you know, replacements and all that from there. The pen tool, has every, anyone, um, oh, by the way, let me go back. Uh, this lasso tool, you know, shortcut L. <clears throat> um, you're going to have your regular lasso tool. It's just going to be a very organic shape you can create and move things out of the way. Um, polygon lasso tool is just a click and a drag. It's all angular stuff. Closing the path like so will um, allow you to move that move that shape that you just uh, lassoed around. Uh, magnetic lasso tool, you know, it's it's just kind of going to stick to whatever it thinks you're wanting to lasso around. So I'm just going around this house. 
and it's pretty accurate. It just really snaps to the object that you think you're going to want to, uh, that it thinks you're going to want to, uh, you know, select. And I can just double click it if I kind of got lost there and uh, uh, to create, uh, oops, to uh, finish that off. Yeah, the pen tool is probably the tool that I use the most when I'm when I'm doing this kind of work. Um, I'll use it to select basically. How, I use it all the time. Um, I use it for people's hair. I use it for you know bodies. I use it for solid shapes. You know so. To use this tool, you literally, I'm just going to grab it here, I, uh, it's P, so you take the P, you click P, and you just start, you know, click around what you want to trace. And it works just like the Illustrator tool, so I can kind of, you know, get really detailed into these curves and stuff. This is why this is probably my tool of choice, because I have complete control over what I'm doing here. You know, and I can go decently fast with it. Um, but if you want, you know, really sharp edges, you know, that's the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do with this pen tool here is I'm going to um, select this paths tab. And I'm going to hit this three, however many lines that is, with this more menu. And I'm just going to um, hit this make selection. And then what you can do is uh, feather the edge of the uh, pen tool selection. Um, so what that means really is just soften the edge. Um, so I'm going to soften it. I can do it by um, a matter of pixels, so like two pixels. And I'll just hit OK. And so you can kind of see now that the edge of what I captured with my pen tool um, you know, it's feathered in that way. So this is this is where I use it for like hair and stuff. Uh, also undo that. I'm back where I where I started, where I closed the pen tool path. Um, you know, I'm going to make a selection and just have it feather at zero pixels. And so now you can see that it's a sharper edge. So that, that really is my tool of choice, I think. Um, you know, if, you know, I want to I wanna select this entire house, you know, with the pen tool now. I've selected about half of it here, you can see. So let's say I want to select, you know, the rest of it. I'm just, now I'm combining both pen paths together. See, I didn't, I didn't get it all the first time, so. You know, again, go to path, make selection, and in this dialog box here, um, I can add to my existing selection. So you can see my little, what do they call it, uh, marching ants around there of what I have already selected. Um, just hit add to selection to add to it, and then now I can, you know, select the rest of the house. You know, that helps for you know, different things. Like, say I wanted to, you know, select like this tree over here and then this tree over here. If I was that good with the pen tool, I could do that. <coughs> also, um, again, a, a big part of this is select, you know, learning how to select stuff. So say I got this house selected. I'm going to go back to my lasso tool. Um, and I'm just going to hit L to do that. And I'm going to hold my shift key down. You can see that there's a plus sign underneath the lasso tool there. So what I'm going to do is, with my shift key held down, I'm going to click and trace everything that I want to include in the current selection with my lasso tool. So I'm just going to do like the flowers. And so now I have this selection and that selection done. Say I wanted to cut these guys out. I'll just do a copy by Command C, Command V. And I've created a new layer with the house and the flowers in the foreground. 
and then I can just uh, let's see add a new layer by clicking this button down here delete this and then now I can let's just say oh it looks terrible but I'll just uh, edit and fill this with the color in the background just this crazy looking blue and then hit OK yeah <laughs> so I guess you get the idea this history palette is I'm sorry yeah it's floating I like that idea <laughs> uh, this history palette is probably my best friend because you can only command undo so, so many times in Photoshop ie once um, so what I do is have this history palette accessible to me and just go back, go back, go back and fix all of the things that I screwed up. Um, all right. Oops. No. All right. Let's see. Uh, crop tool. Basic, simple. It's right over here. Um, you know, C is the shortcut. Again, you know, all your shortcuts are going to be here. You know, crop tool, it's going to put, you know, this dotted edge around your entire image, and you'll be able to grab the corners and just crop it down. It's nice because it's going to snap to the edge, um, you know, but uh, here, I'll just, there you go. Wherever you want your image cropped, go for it like that and just hit return. And there you have it. It's 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 the way you want it to be. So I'll undo that quick. Um, what I'm going to do also is show you another way that I will usually 99.9% .9 of the time crop something. Is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select this tree with the lasso tool, real rough, and uh, I'm going to. Um, you can see my marching ants there, so I'm going to Command Shift I. So prior, the reason why I did that was because now I'm going to select the entire canvas around what I have selected instead of what I have selected. So here, if I was to delete, you know, of course I'm going to delete the tree. But now if I Command Shift I, that's going to select the opposite of what I have selected, and now I can just delete the entire background really quickly. Um, so typically what I'll do when I'm cropping something 90% of the time is I'll go to, uh, uh, to image and then trim because I'm always working in layers. So you're, you're always going to be working in, uh, Adobe InDesign and just trim transparent pixels. And, you know, 99% of the time, when I'm working on something in Photoshop, it's not going to be a big painting or um, it's not going to be like a big giant illustration. It's going to be like a photo of like a product or a photo of a model or a person. And then I'm going to trim everything down, all of the pixels down, and just place it in InDesign and move it around that way within the composition. And, you know, let's just say, you know, someone's going to ask me, uh, well, change the color of this model shirt or whatever or change the hair from, you know, blue to red, um, then I'm just going to select that in InDesign and jump back to the Photoshop file, make that change, reload it in the InDesign file, and it'll be done, you know, quickly. So uh, that's typically how I'll use the cropping um, tool. Eyedropper tool, um, this is just going to select um, basically a, a color from the background so or from anything really so if I zoom in here on the image these are all tiny 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 pixels um, of color and really when we're zooming out of an image it's going to be um, it, it's really like an optical illusion you know to your eye this is the same idea with print you know when you look at a piece of print in a magazine it's tiny microscopic little pixels you know, or little dots of ink, you know, crunched together to create 
any color that you'll see in a magazine. So um, what the eyedropper tool is going to do is let me go in here and uh, just kind of sample out a color. And if you notice here on the lower left side, um, you'll see a, uh, you know, our, my two swatches here. This first swatch is, um, is my foreground color. And this other swatch here is my background color. So I'm really going to select just uh, uh, a pixel of my eyedropper tool. And it's going to establish a color for my foreground, uh, foreground swatch uh, color. Um, so if I click and hold the eyedropper tool and I drag this around, you can see that the top half of the circle um, is changing to different tones of green, blue, just depending on where I'm going with the image. Um, and that's just giving me really a preview of what my foreground color is going to be. What is the foreground color? Well, how do I use it? Um, so what you can do is just hit the B the B button, the B key, um, and that, that really is going to give you a brush. So here's your options for the brush, you know, via the interface. These are shortcuts. Um, I'm not sure if anyone knows the shortcuts to make them small, make the brush smaller or bigger. Mm-hmm, good. So, uh, or wait, no, it's actually, it's the, the brackets. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so right, so this... It's the right bracket, uh, the left bracket, and the right bracket. So I'm hitting the left bracket, and it's making this smaller. I'm hitting the right bracket, and it's making it bigger. It's a great shortcut, you know, to to use to increase just production speed and you know get this you know thing done. You know, um, some of these other tools here. Um, uh, the one I typically use a lot is uh, opacity. Um, so really, this is going to adjust um, how thick of a color you're going to have um, be putting down every time you click on the uh, the brush tool. So I'm going to put it about 50% opacity and you can see that okay it's halfway there let me put it at 100. Oop, that's a thousand. So you see kind of a difference between you know the tones of color um, and the reason why you know it's laying all those colors down is because of the uh, of my change to the foreground color swatch here and where did I get that you know color swatch it's gonna be straight from the um, eyedropper tool that I pulled out some of let me think here that same tool I'm sure you're all um, familiar with the clone stamp tool that same exact tool or that same exact methodology for you know um, putting for the same methodology for, you know, using brushes is, is kind of, is, is exactly the same as with the clone stamp tool. Like, so the clone stamp tool, I'll, I'll simply hit it with, um, get it by hitting the letter S. And uh, again, it's over here. I never use this pattern stamp tool. It's just something that I've never had to use. Um, but with the clone stamp tool, I can both establish the element within the composition that I want to duplicate, and then also uh, and also establish where that's going to go. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, establish that I'm going to duplicate this tree. So again, I'm using the left and right brackets to make this bigger. This is my clone stamp tool. Um, this is the brush icon that it's going to have. And what I'm going to do is hold the Option key down, and I'm going to just click what I want to start stamping. So I'm just going to click the top of this tree, and now you can see like a preview of what this is going to you know, produce for me. Um, I can adjust its opacity here, so I can make it lighter. 100% um, will be fully saturated. You know, 0% is going to be lighter, uh, less saturated, and I'm really clicking and dragging. So you can see like over on the left hand side you can see a crosshair. I'll kind of move it. It's really hard to see in the blue but it's a crosshair there and that's really just showing me what I'm mirroring on the left side. You know so you can see kind of what it's doing. I can increase the opacity to make it look you know less ghost-like. 
And this is nice because it gives you a preview of what it's going to do. Look here, I'll show you on this tip of the roof. It, well, the later versions of Photoshop are now giving us previews of what this clone stamp tool is going to do before it actually does it. Very helpful. So I can just pop this tree in here. Let me go back and do it in a better way. So let me do it. I'm going to kind of mix a little bit of, of selecting and clone stamping. What I like to do is get a real tight edge around some of these structures. So here, I'm going to take the pen tool and trace this kind of rough. This is the area that I don't want my stamp to affect because I want to make it look like it's going behind the tree. So I'll, again, I'm going to go trace it with the pen tool, make a new selection, OK that. Make sure that the layer that I want to edit is appropriate. And then again, clone stamp tool. I'm going to use my Alt key to point to the selection that I want to begin duplicating at, my point of duplication here. Click, and then just bring it over. And, oh, skipping one step, what I need to do is Command-Shift-I to, because anything that I'm going to start clone stamping here is not going to show up because I don't have this area selected. So I'm going to have to Command-Shift-I to select the opposite of what's selected here. <coughs> All right. All right. Now this will work. And now I can really easily get this tree behind it without making a mess behind the building that is. So really just, it's done a lot faster that way. You know, I could have just gone down here and said, okay, well, I'm gonna make a, let me get my stamp tool again. Make it smaller. You know, I could have just gone down here and said, okay, I'm going to stamp this tree right back here. And it's gone really tiny and just, you know, build it nice and nice and small, little by little. Well, it looks terrible. But you kind of get the idea. It's like selecting really, you know, will cut, cut your production time in half. More than that, really. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> art history brush <clears throat> so you can get to this tool by clicking uh, Y <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> so my art history brush here <clears throat> I can just select that um, again increase and decrease the size with the uh, uh, with the um, uh, bracket tools now whatever I've edited <clears throat> in Photoshop my art history brush will bring it well, when I click on the area, we'll bring it back to its original state. So this tree that I just put in here, I can just erase it just like this. So instead of me having to go and clone stamp clouds in to cover up what I just did, I can literally just take this art history brush and just delete that and start from scratch again. <coughs> uh, eraser tool. Again, this is... This is something that I'll, let me see if I can find another picture. Uh, okay. Instead of watching the same trees over and over again, just look at something different. <clears throat> so, um, you know, eraser, really basic. Um, you can get to it by clicking E, and um, you know typically with an eraser, I'm going to use it um, when I'm tracing someone's hair to feather the edge of the hair, so it looks like it belongs on a clean background or wherever. So um, basically, um, it's applying a background color right now. So the reason why it's doing that is because my layer here is locked. 
and you can tell it's locked because of the lock and then the, it says background on it. To unlock that layer, I'm going to undo what I just did there. To unlock, just again, double click it. You can give it a name. Uh, you know, Typically, you'll want to give your files pretty detailed names if your Photoshop file is going to get really huge. Um, but luckily with InDesign, we don't have to build, you know, a whole, you know, 100 layer file um, in Photoshop to achieve the same results. <clears throat> so um, typically, the largest Photoshop file I would consider would be probably five layers. Um, so what I did was I uh, just unlocked this layer and now when I'm erasing, I can, I can see this, you know, background for it. Um, again, uh, bracket left, bracket right, you know, decrease and increase the size, um, enabling you not to have to go up here and, and make those adjustments. Um, you're going to want to adjust probably the hardness of the edge, so I'll show you what the hardest edge looks like. Of course, it's just going to be chopping this out. Um, and then here's 50% softness, hardness, I mean and 0% uh, hardness. So just, the, you know, you can kind of see the difference between um, uh, what those uh, values get you. I'll do that art history brush again. Um, gradient tool. I'll usually use this gradient tool just if I'm going to um, uh, uh, create like a gradient blend of something. But really, it, it's it's not that great of a tool. You know, I'm going to select an area. I'm going to select the gradient tool. Um, it's going to give me some options in the upper uh, left. Um, you can just you know choose from these predefined options uh, to create a gradient within that box or within that shape. Um, or whatnot. So um, the magic wand tool, um, they kind of hit it under this quick selection tool. You get to it through W. Uh, so the first time you hit it, you're going to have to click and hold that um, uh, that element and just select it. Um, but really, this magic wand tool really will um, select pixels that are related in colors. Uh, so that's, a that's variable or defined basically by the tolerance that I choose um, for, the, for the tool. So um, a tolerance of 90, um, let's, just, let's just try this out. So a tolerance of 90 is going to select a majority of these pixels in this blue area. You know, so, so the higher the tolerance, the the higher the probability that the pixels that are a little bit close to that blue pixel that I just clicked are going to be selected. The lower the tolerance, uh, let's do it with 30. Now it's not going to select as many of the pixels in the area. Um, so I'll just have those pixels selected and I'll just show you how you can just kind of mix some of these you know aspects together. So from what I just selected, I basically took the gradient tool and just dragged it across there. Um, there's better better uses uh, uh, for the gradient tool. Like for instance, um, I'll take my magic wand tool again. I'll give it a tolerance of 60. I'll sample what that's going to be. I'll add a <clears throat> excuse me new layer underneath this existing layer. Oh, you know what? And then I'll fill it. I'll fill that layer with. Let's see. And just something bright. There we go. All right. So I have that layer underneath. Um, really, I'm going to take my poster. I'm going to select some pixels with my magic wand tool. I'm going to hit this button down here. This is my mask mask tool. So you can see with the mask tool that whatever is 
not selected is going to have, I'm turning this on and off, whatever is not selected in my composition is going to have um, uh, basically like a red, red coating over it. This is temporary to show what you have selected to give you a really good idea of what's going on here. Um, if I take my magic wand tool and go over an area that's not selected, i.e. something that's red, and then hold the shift key and select it, it's going to add it to the selection. So usually I'll use masks to select things as well. So if I want to go in here and Diesel, uh, uh, select this piece that's behind or you know in front of this guy's face between him and the boat. Um, I can uh, add to that selection with the brush tool. So I'll hit B and just oh I'm sorry with the eraser tool. So then now when I juggle back, circle back to. Uh, with this masking option, um, that area is so it is added to the selection. So, so masking is helpful for some of that stuff. I want to go into uh, masking in 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 greater depth. Uh, excuse me, depth later on. Um, but this just gives you a rough idea of how you can um, how you can select things. Uh, just selecting is a big part of you know this, so we got to understand. So that's everything selected. All right, let's see. Uh, copy, cut, paste, Command C. Um, uh, copy, Command X, cut, uh, Command V, paste. All very common shortcuts uh, that I use. Um, Transform tool, that's uh, let's see, where is that? I always access it with T, but it's not. Well, let me just, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Transform tool, Command T. So if I want to, let's not do that. If I want to cut this lady out of the boat, really rough. You know what, a better way to do that will probably be with a magnetic lasso. So I'm just tracing her with the magnetic lasso. It's connecting to the yellow pixels on the edge of the boat. If something messes up as I'm tracing it, I can just hit the delete button to remove the last endpoint that it laid down. So as I go around, I can click the edges. And maybe I get it roughed in a little bit for now. And use another tool to pick up the pieces of the rest. I'm using my space bar as I go around this piece to move the canvas. Double click to finish that selection. I'm going to turn the masking mode on and off to see what I have picked out here because these marching ants are kind of difficult to see. All right, so then I can take my pen tool and clean up the edge here for what I want to select. Kind of rough it in the middle and get it a little more refined towards these edges. Finish the path and uh, go to paths, make selection, going to add to it. <clears throat> okay.
Command Shift I to, <clears throat> to select the outer edge of all this. So I can isolate her now. <clears throat> so now what I wanted to do is transform her. So I'll go, you can go to the menu and go to Edit Transform. Uh, I'll use the Command T. It's going to just put a bounding box around her. There's a couple different ways to transform, you know, objects. You can scale it down, you know, much like Illustrator. Grab an edge, um, hold the Shift key to um, to scale it um, uh, with its uh, original dimensions, um, down or up. You know, when you scale it up, it's going to um, spread out the pixels of the image, so it's going to reduce in quality. Um, all of these different options under transform, um, if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to um, uh, just mess with them. Uh, so warp, for instance, you know, you can um, apply a warp to the layer and just kind of you know, stretch it out um, uh, every which way. Um, typically that would be done, uh, the reason that would be done um, would be uh, to mock 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 some something like let's say you want to do a, put a painting or mock a painting on a wall or a logo on a basketball, you know you'd you drag the logo from Illustrator into Photoshop on top of a basketball image and you just wrap the logo around a basketball. Um, uh, it, it's it's kind of just whatever your um, your current need is. Um, that tool will allow you to. Go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll zoom in and zoom out. Uh, you know, you can use that with this tool here. Uh, the, uh, of course, the hourglass tool. Click, drag. Oh, what? No, I guess it's a click. Wherever you click, you just you know zoom into it and then back out. Um, typically, I'll just hit the command spacebar. Um, combination, but my computer is not allowing me to do that right now. Anyhow, um, actually, what I use mostly is probably Command Plus and Minus for that to zoom in and out. Um, that I think that's the basics here. I mean, oh, there's some other kind of tools that I can um, you know, blur, sharpen, and smudge. Um, don't use that so much. Uh, dodge and burn I'll use a lot. So um, let's say, for instance, you have someone with uh, uh, really heavy bags under their eyes. And I'm sure I couldn't find a, unless I have a photo of like myself. Uh, do I have a photo of myself? I don't know. But yet, let me see, maybe I do. You know what? I'm going to go online and find one. Yeah, this guy's got some really bad bags. Let me pop that open. Drag him down. All right. Perfect. So, so with an image like this, um, you know, I used to get a lot of images of people with really terrible bags in their eyes or really bad photos to work with. Um, so typically what I would do is open it up, zoom in on their eyes, and hit this dodge tool and just click it to lighten up some of the bags under their eyes. And it just gives it more of a, just a better, better look, you know. So um, exposure, you know, that's going to that's going to give you the variable of um, um, how how strong this tool is with every click that I brush with. Um, so usually I start out pretty low. I'll art history brush that real quick and just uh, oop. That's a, there we go. We'll go back to it. 
So really, this is just gonna this is just gonna take all of the dark pixels within the area and lighten them up step by step. So I'll start with a small adjustment and then work my way up. So we'll start at like 15%. Oop, it's five, 15. So then I can just step by step kind of brush it to the point where it doesn't look fake, you know. Ultimately is the idea for that. You know, you could take your um, you could take your blur tool um, and intentionally blur blur this part of the photo out. You know, sometimes I'll use the blur tool if I take like my clone stamp tool and then I start cleaning something up and then I have like a really you know terrible clone stamp you know lines in there. I'll take the blur tool and just kind of go over that so it it kind of hides that better. This edge is pretty, pretty rough. Just blur that out. So at least he doesn't look like he has a black eye. Of course, I probably spend way, I typically spend way more time on something like that, but you kind of get the idea. Kind of puts the tool into a, into a, a reasonable perspective there. I'll just go over then the burn tool, I think, and go from there. Um, so for this tool, uh, what I would, you know, really it's just the opposite of the blur, or the, I'm sorry, of the dodge tool. Um, so this is going to darken an area that I have that might be too light. So maybe there's, um, uh, you know, too many highlights on some kind of some kind of image so if you just hit this tool and again same idea same concept um, really adjust the exposure I'll show you at a hundred percent and I want this guy to like look like he got you know punched in the face I can just take this burn tool and I'm literally darkening all all the um, the uh, medium mid-tone mid -tone, uh, pixels. <laughs> so, that's not bad, actually. All right. 